Let's go. I've stayed in some pretty sick hotels over the years, but if you're a cricket fan, I think the view from this one is pretty tough to beat. Check it out. Awesome. I may just be doing slight catch-ups and emails, but can't complain about the view. <laughs> Delegation. So a friend of mine is just in the process of growing his business and he wanted to know how you kind of delegate and how you let go of that control for the first time. And it's something I think every single person in the world struggles with when they're first bringing on people. And it's even something that a lot of the managers at Exposure Ninja have struggled giving work to their people underneath them if they're a first time manager because the whole concept is well I'm now going to be giving this piece of work to someone else I don't know if they're going to do it as well as me and all the doubts come across like this person's never going to be as good as I am what if they make mistakes it's going to take me so long to teach them how to do it I may as well just do it myself and all of these things and we all think exactly the same but the truth is no empire was built with just one person so at some point you're going to have to get somebody else to do work and you're gonna to have to show them how to do it. So here's my very, very quick guide to delegating effectively. Step one, identify what you need to delegate. So to do this, you need to map out your entire calendar and work out exactly what you're spending your time on every single day for a whole week. What you're looking for is every single little task that pops up. This is gonna take ages and it's gonna really slow down your whole week. But that's totally okay because the long-term benefit will massively outweigh the frustration of having to do this. Once you've had a look at everything that you do in a week, jot down each of the tasks that you're spending time on in a spreadsheet. So for example, this might be talking to clients, this might be talking to new prospects, it might be doing some marketing, it might be answering email, it might be uh, doing a bit of a website, it might be writing some content, it might be taking photos, it might be editing, whatever it is. All of the different activities that you do in a typical week, you wanna list them out in a spreadsheet. Step three is to assign a financial value to each of the different tasks that you're doing in a typical week. And to make this easy, you're gonna use different pricing bands. So your different pricing bands are going to be 10 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds, and 1,000 pounds. These are gonna be the different possible prices that you can give each of the tasks in your list. Now you're looking to assign an hourly rate to each of these tasks. So for example, if you spend a lot of your time editing images for social media, that is something that you could pay somebody 10 pounds an hour to do or less. Um, if you are spending your time doing sales, that is something that you could spend 50 pounds or less on average per hour. So you would assign those values to each of the different tasks that you've got in your list. Now, once you've done all of this, step four is to look through your list and see how much of your time you're spending doing the lower value items on the list. These would be the things that you'd want to delegate first. So for example, if you're spending 80% of your time doing 10 pounds an hour task, well guess what, your value to the company is 10 pounds an hour. Now that's, there's nothing wrong with that, but if you're the leader of the company, you've got to appreciate that you're not serving your company best. Your company is not gonna grow as long as you're doing those lower value tasks that you could be and should be paying somebody else to do. Now here's the trap that people fall into. I was just watching an agency owner, a very successful agency owner, who was giving recommendations on how to plan your time. And what they started from was, what's my perfect day? What do I really love doing all day? What are my favorite tasks? And then they design their perfect day based on those tasks, then they configure their business so that they're only doing that stuff because their thinking is, the business is here to serve me, I wanna do what I wanna do, and then I need to fill in the gaps with everything else. This is completely self-centered. The business is not here to serve you, you are here to serve the business, even if you own it. So your job is not to do what you love, your job is to do what the business needs. Now I love, for example, editing videos, but if I spend all my time editing videos, Exposure Ninja doesn't grow because I can't do the stuff, I don't have time to do the stuff that only I can do. The other side of that is Ovejo who edits our videos is fantastic, she's way way better than me. So I can't justify doing the stuff I love just because I love doing it. I need to do the stuff that the business needs me to do. Commit to delegating those lower value tasks. 
The first time you do this, it's gonna take ages. Something that used to take you 10 minutes is probably gonna take you an hour to explain. Then someone's gonna do it, they're gonna do it wrong, and you're gonna have to re-educate them on how to do it. So let's say that 10 minute task takes you three hours to do. But guess what, once you've spent that time teaching somebody else how to do it, you never have to do that 10 minute task again. So if that's something that happens every single day, so if that's a task that you'd spend 10 minutes per day doing, then by the time you're into your third week, you're all good. You've paid back the time invested and for the rest of your life, the time that you don't have to spend doing that task, you can spend doing high value things. So yes, it's gonna take you ages to show someone how to do something the first time and in fact, probably the second time as well, but after that, you're good. You never have to do that thing again. Quick tip on when you're showing somebody how to do something, we love videos at Exposure Ninja. Loads of the stuff that we do is computer-based, so we just do a screen recording, we talk through the task and exactly what's involved, and then we give that to someone and they always have that as a reference. Much better than showing them live, because if you show them live, even if they take notes, they're not gonna keep a perfect record, they're not gonna know the questions to ask, whereas if you make them a video, they can actually see you running through, then you've done that once and it's done forever, you've always got it, you can give that to other people, it's super, super scalable. Now here are my secret additional ninja tips on delegating. Tip number one, the person needs to know what good looks like. So if you're giving them a task which requires some judgment, you need to give them lots of examples of good and some examples also of bad as well if you can. So when we're training our review ninjas, for example, to do the marketing reviews at Exposure Ninja, we give them a training, we call it the Hall of Fame Library of Awesomeness. And this is all of the marketing reviews that have resulted in successful sales at Exposure Ninja. We give them this bank of info so they can go through, they can dig around, they can start to see what good looks like so they know they have a reference point for where they're looking to take that particular task. If they don't know what good looks like, how can they possibly replicate it? And the first time they do something, they're really not gonna know what good looks like. So you don't want them kind of flailing around experimenting. You wanna give them a really good anchor on exactly what you're looking for. Now also to help with this, a checklist can be great. So if you can give people a checklist so they know once they've got all of these things marked off, they're done and that's exactly what you're expecting, then that's perfect. If you look at any factory, they always have checklists saying when this task is done. Quality check, you know, you see the quality things. You used to see a, a little box that had been ticked and stamped by someone. That was to say they'd run through that checklist, they'd said, yes, this is approved, stamp it with my initials, that means I own it, done. But they need to have the checklist in order to be able to work through that. If you're expecting people to kind of figure out by osmosis what they need to do and what a successful task completion looks like, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes and they're gonna make even more. Another thing I'd suggest is to give people the big picture of what they're doing. So not just, here's this task, put this thing in this box, but actually, why are we doing this? What's the customer like? What are they thinking about? Why are they buying this product? What does this thing need to do? The reason you wanna give people a big picture is because if they do have to make uh, judgments, decisions around the edges of the task, they're gonna be able to do that with a bit more context. If you just say, right, sit here, put this there, do that there, just keep repeating that, and you don't give them any context to their task, they're not gonna be able to make any decisions outside of the very specific instructions that you've given them. So it's always good to over-empower people, give them as much context as you can. For example, at Exposure Ninja, we like to give people additional training, maybe in other areas that aren't directly related to their jobs, just because the more context we can give them, the better decisions they're gonna make when they need to. So if you're thinking about delegating, massively encourage you to do so. We've got a whole bunch of ninjas here at Exposure Ninja now. Exposure Ninja would not be the company it was if it was just me trying to do everything myself. And in fact, nothing brings me more joy than seeing a fantastic person doing a much better job of something that I used to do, that I thought, I'm the best at this. No one's gonna beat me. And then when I see someone absolutely smashing me, it actually makes me feel really good because I know that the customer, the client, is getting the best result possible. And it means I can focus on the stuff that I need to do, the planning, the big picture, and the vision and stuff. So I hope that's useful. Don't hesitate from delegating. You've got to delegate as soon as you possibly can. Do it early, but get it right. Give your people a lot of help and support. Make sure that they're set up to win. Until the next video, see you soon.